Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee, with your daily devotional. We're going to do a reading from uh, Through the Bible Through the Year with John Stott, a great old pastor and Bible teacher who's been a hero of mine down through the years, now at home with the Lord. And uh, this reading is from Colossians 1, 28. He reads from the uh, New Revised Standard Version. It is he, meaning Christ, whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. And so here we have in the uh, letter to the church at Colossae, that ancient city up at the sort of uh, eastern side of the Lycus Valley, the Lycus River running right through it, um, just about 100 miles east of Ephesus, where Paul spent a good deal of time. And here, as Paul writes to the Christians, uh, the Colossian Christians, he hasn't met them face to face. We know that from the letter itself. Uh, he didn't found this church, probably founded by his friend Epaphras. And as he writes to them, he wants to let them know that it's Christ that they're that he's proclaiming. And that the idea, the goal of the letter is to encourage them in their maturity in Christ. Now, I walked the aisle when I was five years old, and I am now years old. Okay, look, I just kind of slurred the number because it's a big one. But it's been a long time. And the one thing that I've learned over the years is that just because we grow old doesn't mean we grow mature. The number of years since you walked the aisle or since I walked the aisle or we raised our hands or we knelt down and received Christ as our Savior, the, the amount of time that has passed isn't always an indicator of whether we're mature in Christ or not. And so as Paul writes to them, he wants them to think about maturing in Christ. And I think it's good for me to think about, to continue to think about that, even though I've you know, gone the route of, of of studying and teaching the Bible for years and years, done over 750 Bible studies myself, I still need to mature in Christ. I've got so far to go. And the question is, is am, I, am I hungry for that? Uh, am I setting myself up for a win when it comes to nurturing growth and using the spiritual disciplines or the spiritual practices, however you want to call them, to place myself before God so that he can transform me and mature me in Christ. Well, let's see what Stott says. Enough of me talking. Let's see what Stott has to say here. We tend to think of Paul as a pioneer missionary who won converts, planted churches, and moved on. But the goal of his ministry, he tells us, was to go beyond conversion to discipleship, namely namely, to present everyone mature in Christ, as Colossians 1, 28 here says. Enjoying a relationship with Christ in which we worship, love, trust, and obey him. How then do Christians mature? Stott says, our text gives us a plain answer. It is through the proclamation of Christ. If Christian maturity is maturity in our relation to Christ, then the clearer our vision of Christ, the more convinced we are that he is worthy of our commitment. And here, John Stott, one of my very, very favorites, one of my great mentors from a distance, I never met, well, I did meet him once, but, but he wouldn't have known me if, 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 uh, if we, somebody had asked him, who's Jim Thomas? He'd go, I don't know. Um, but here, one of my mentors quotes another one of my mentors from a distance, J.I. Packer. So stop quoting Packer. Packer has written in his classic book, Knowing God, by the way, great book, go get it and read it, gotta have one of those. He says, uh, Stott says, Packer has written in his classic book, Knowing God, we are pygmy Christians because we have a pygmy God, or indeed a pygmy Christ. The truth is that there are many Jesuses on offer in the world's religious supermarkets, caricatures of the authentic Jesus. There's Jesus the ascetic. There's Jesus the clown of Godspell. That's the musical that some of you probably haven't heard of, but um, nonetheless, uh, uh, presentation of, of uh, one idea of who Jesus uh, was, according to that particular composer. Uh, there's Jesus Christ Superstar, uh, another uh, 
caricature of Jesus. Jesus the capitalist and Jesus the socialist. And here people just kind of trying to co-opt Jesus for their causes, be they uh, economic or, or, or social uh, uh, actions, so, uh, social activity. Jesus, the founder of modern business, and Jesus, the urban gorilla. All of these images are defective, though. None of them is calculated to win our wholehearted allegiance. And what is Stott saying here? Is he, is he saying that all of those things don't matter, that art, music, that commerce, that all those things aren't important at all, that Jesus doesn't in some way influence all of those things? No, he's not saying that. But what he is saying is that you can't reduce Jesus to just that. See, he's Lord over all. Yeah. He's Lord over me. He's Lord over my uh, citizenship. He's Lord over my work. He's Lord over my creative efforts. He's Lord over my marriage. He's Lord over my being a son to my mother. He's Lord of everything. Lord means Lord. Uh, wholehearted allegiance is what that's calculated to uh, to bring about when we hear him called Lord. Instead, Stott says, we need to see Jesus as Paul presents him in verses 15 through 21 of Colossians chapter 1, especially. This is one of the most sublime Christological passages in the New Testament. It portrays Jesus as the visible image of the invisible God, the agent and heir of creation. In other words, by him all things were created, and for him and through him. See, this is, it's a profound chapter. Go back and read Colossians chapter 1. Again, if you haven't read it lately, it's powerful that way. Christ is also the firstborn from the dead, so that in everything he might have the preeminence. Indeed, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ and has reconciled all things through Christ. Thus, Jesus Christ has a double supremacy as head of the universe and head of the church. He is the Lord of both creations. When we see him thus, our place is on our faces prostrate before him. Away then with our petty, puny, pygmy Jesuses. Away with our Jesus clowns and our Jesus pop stars. Away with our political messiahs and revolutionaries. If this is how we think of Christ, no wonder our immaturities persist. Stott was a very gentle-spoken man. But here, the Apostle Paul, who wasn't always known for being gentle, but who could be quite gentle, who was not only an apostle, but a pastor. He had a pastor's heart as well. And you just see that over and over again with the way he writes to some of the different churches that he did start and that he did visit. Hmm. But this is, this is Stott calling us to the real Jesus. The real Jesus of history, that's right, but the real Jesus of everything, the Lord of all. Yeah, the one who Paul speaks about in Colossians, the one to whom we're to grow up in. And how about you? Have you, you stopped growing? Have I stopped growing? These are questions we must ask ourselves from time to time. Away with all of our Jesus clowns and Jesus pop stars and our political messiahs and our revolutionaries. If this is how we think of Christ, no wonder our immaturities persist. If only the veil could be taken from our eyes and we could see Jesus as he is in the fullness of his divine human person and saving work. Then, we would give him the honor that is due to his name, and we would grow into a mature relationship with him. It is he, Christ, whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Let me pray for us. Lord, have thine own way with me with my brothers and sisters this morning. Have thine own way with us. You are the potter, we are the clay. Lord, make us and mold us, grow us up, and may the uh, net result of all of this be that we 
have hearts like the heart of Jesus, that we see others with the eyes of Jesus, that we see ourselves with the eyes of Jesus. Oh, Lord, give us a clearer vision of your truth, a greater faith in your power, and a more confident assurance of your love toward us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.